Alexandre Sarre. Happy Labor Day, everybody. Ooh. I hope you guys are enjoying your Labor Day because I know I am. I'm over here relaxing, chilling, and about to watch The Expanse, season one, episode five. Did you see how I just kind of threw that in there? Hmm, I'm good. So before I jump into episode five, let's just talk about episode four. The famous episode four that everybody kept talking about. So let's just do a quick recap of the last episode. So in the last episode on Earth, Christian uh, is trying to get a ship to the Dagenager to rescue the Canterbury, Canterbury survivors that was taken prisoner by Mars. So um, Christian, I, I, I put her last name and that's what I was about to say and then I realized, mm -mm, don't do it to yourself, just keep reading. So um, Christian did try to get um, them to send people over there to help the Canterbury's but obviously she has a little bit of pushback in doing so. At the Tycho Ty station we meet Fred um, Johnson, the head of the operations on the construction of a massive ship known as the Navajo, which will send a group of Mormons on a hundred year voyage. So we met this cool character. I actually liked him. I thought he was a pretty cool character. Um, he was building um, a new something or another ship. Obviously, I wrote massive ship. So that's what he was building. And... Um, the Mormons um, asked also that obviously people want him replaced because of his ties with um, that group, the OPA. So they had like a back and forth conversation. And he asked, uh, Fred asked the Mormons to get off the ship so his crew can continue with the um, collaboration work. But then he gets on the radio and he demands an update on the do Dagenager. Dagenager. Um, but it, he also said some other stuff, but I kind of forgot what it was because I didn't rewatch the episode again. But, um, he did say some other stuff that I do remember going like, hmm, what? It was just kind of sketchy. On board the Dagenager, well, I don't know why I can't say this word. On the Dagenager, Captain Yao thinks the mystery ship that's still fast and approaching, fast approaching, is coming from for Naomi who she and Lopez believe is a OPA. So we also have that situation that's going on. The approaching ship breaks apart into several smaller vessels and fires torpedoes. So that was also really interesting. This, um, whoever these people are, are very high advanced because they literally broke up. I was like, what is that? It, it broke up into like different ships and ended up shooting out um, torpedoes. The ship's PDC cannons aren't very effective against the attacker's advanced weaponry. The Dagenager takes a beating, forced to switch to short-range rail guns to hopefully finish the job. So Captain Yao was also really like confident that she was going to beat these um, people, whoever they were. And that's when I knew how confident she was. I knew that they weren't going to beat them. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew she wasn't going to beat them. Um, the Dagenager's main drive goes out, causing the interior of the ship to temporarily lose gravity, which was, um, I'm still getting used to, like, how all of this, like, the gravity works and, um, all of, I'm just, the whole situation that deals with space, I'm still just trying to uh, grasp my head around. I wasn't, ri I don't know if y'all haven't been, like, noticing, I wasn't the one in high school. In high school, elementary school, I was about making people laugh and causing a little misfit. But I should have sat down and read more books. But I did graduate, just in case y'all were wondering. I graduated flying colors. Thank you! Um, <laughs> this freaks out Alex, who Shed um, tries to help by offering one of his cinnamon sticks, which I still don't understand, but we'll leave it at that. One final act of kindness before the medic is suddenly decapitated by gunfire that punches through the ship. So that that scene, I knew something bad happened when the sounds 
happened. But I didn't think he was going to die. I actually like, I like, I like, I don't think I dislike anybody so far. But everybody's just dying. But I don't, I don't dislike anybody. So it's kind of, it sucks when we lose a character. Also, Naomi and Amos had to plug the holes in the wall with whatever they plugged it in and they glued it. So, they were safe. Um, on route to their escape shuttle. Oh, I skipped because, listen, the last um, review, I mean, the recap I did two, two um, films ago, it was like so long. So I just kind of like jumped to the part where Holden, where Captain Yao told um, Holden that he needs, he's going to be sent back to Earth because he's the only one that knows about this mystery ship that also took out the Canterbury that's taking out Mars. And clearly they're trying to put all of this on Mars and start a war. So Captain Yao um, made him the guy, the guy to be able to announce that it wasn't Mars and he knows who it is, kind of. So on route to the skate shuttle, Holton and his Martian escorts are attacked by mystery soldiers armed with advanced weaponry and faceplates that changes their features. So that's why I thought they were like aliens because the way they looked, they also were really scary. So I'm assuming these are the villains, clearly. But um, I thought they were gonna be like alien-ish because the way they even looked. It w and then everything, how their, his suit, when his arm got shot off or whatever, his suit covered it. It just, it just was freaky. Um, let's move on. The Dagenager main dra drive goes out, causing an interior... Oh, I already said that part. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, at Sirius Station, Miller identifies the course of Julie Mao's hot date, Night Belter 31, as Busy Beteco. Now, I realize when I do these um, videos, an airplane goes by, car alarms go off, I maybe gunshots go. I live in a decent area, but I can't get through one film without something loud happening in the background. So that's why I'm like yelling because I don't have my mic yet. So I have to yell. But back to what I was saying. Miller visits Bizy or Busy's apartment building where he finds a slingshot club, which is an illegal um, extreme sport in which homemade. One person crafts slingshot around the gravity wells of planets and other, like, celestial bodies. I didn't understand that. I didn't get it. Miller is surprised to find that soon-to-be-doomed slingshotter, whose progress is currently being monitored on the screen, is identified as, we'll call him Mr. B. So, this part also confused me. I didn't understand how the guy was dead but then he's on screen. I didn't understand this group of people, what they were doing there. I just, I didn't understand anything. All I knew is that one guy sounded like um, that character from Star Wars. What is his name? Oh my God, it's gonna bother me. With the long, with the big long ears, I'll figure it out afterwards. But he sounded like him and that's all, that's the only thing I took from that scene. At the morgue, Miller continually scans the body of the Night Belter 31 and comes up with a different identification every time. So now that we know that guy is a fraud. Um, Octo Octavia Musk says the stiff has an ID spoofer mod, an implant used to hide one's true identity. Um, per upon further investigation, Octavia discovers that the body also has implanted memory crypt. So that's when we found out that he had a, like, that body had um an implant in it that then let them know that he was in um he was in something or another he was like a database broker i think that's what it was i could be completely wrong i'm kind of drawing a blank but i still don't understand that how his face is different or the same as the other person that was on screen that blew up and he can have many different names, but it's still the same person. But they're obviously not the same person. So it's just really confusing. Then the bro brothel madame finds, or mad maid, or whatever, finds Havelock 
um, severely wounded but very much alive after being in, in belted with um, the spike to the chest. So I'm happy that Havelock is still alive and clearly he's going to make it and I'm really excited for that because I actually like that character as well as I like them all. So um, yeah, I was happy that he was alive. I was happy that she found him and she rushed to get um, help when I screamed for her to. At least somebody's listening to me. But that was my recap for the last episode. I think I covered it all. Yeah, and oh, and just so you know, the whole crew escapes um, the, with, the, with Lopez, the Martian, and they went out into space, and that's where we left off to them escaping. And Captain Yao blows up and dies with the whole ship. So there goes the Martian. So that was my recap, and I'm ready to jump into this episode, episode 5, and see what the Expanse has got to give. Bloop! Here we go! Oh, God, I'm sorry. Havelock is alive! You idiot. Nice to see you too, Mark. Have luck. You don't listen. I told you. I said keep your head down, keep your eyes open. I told you I was going there too. Uh uh. She just comes out like this house. Please tell me this is just to get well present for yourself. She's been teaching me. I'm getting pretty good too. Nothing mattered to me. He was brave for come check on me. Oh, the police not come down to the Rosebury. Come on. You think she cares about you? What's the name of the scumbag that paid you to lure him down to Medina so they could jam up a cop? Passion for Come on, me without my wallet. What? Bad. <laughs> Men always blinded by love. The MCRN touchy. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up! What is that? Is that blood? Girl, child, we're not trying to do more blood. Is he dead? Probably is. Everybody thought it. Who's up? Uh... Do you get enough sleep, Princess? Do you know what you're doing? I fix ships, not people. God damn it! Just hold him still. Let's oh, give him the shot. Which one do I use first, the anisep or the? Oh. Oh, it's all that. This guy is crazy. Oh, we should get some of that. That is there. And no one knows that we're alive. That's right. There's that. And who just sent us a message? Great. More mystery. Oh my god, Lopez is still either dead or asleep. Oh, oh, oh. I love it, man. There's something, something wrong. What is this? Is this a Anderson station? Another station? Years ago. That's a match. It's a game. Fate. Fate is a wrong. Come on, go. You keep practicing. This is Anderson Station. Go ahead. It's UN-1. Are you ready to surrender? Who is it? Someone. My name is Fred Johnson. 
Director of Don Operations Kinger. at Tycho Station. Don Kinger. I don't know who you are or what your intent may be, but unless you're trying to start a war, you need to contact me. I can help you. Isn't he some kind of big shot for the OPA? Yeah, what does it matter? He offered us help. We have to go somewhere. Well, I say we fly to the nearest Mars base and turn ourselves in. That's an excellent idea. We'll just roll up in a stolen Mickey Corvette with a dead Martian in the trunk. Oh, he is dead. I'm sure they'll roll out the red carpet. Hey, smartass. A lot of good Martians died saving our lives if we get the truth out. The comms on the Donager were jammed during the attack. The only Martians who believe us are dead. So let's just burn hard to Ceres, and we'll take our chances. No port is going to let us dock with our transponder off. And the minute we turn it on, every Martian ship in the system will know it. We're the only survivors from the Canterbury and the Donager. We look like terrorists. That's true. No one's going to believe our story. I wouldn't believe us. Fred Johnson just offered us a lifeline. I say we take it. Then it's two against two. We're not going anywhere. What about a tiebreaker? <laughs> It's over, God. Remember the can. His name's Filat Kotari. Loca Griga Maso. Oh, wow. Sayonara theory. That's my going away present to you. Show me Julie's projected flight path for Scopula. Go 3D. Luckily, this asshole's not OPA. So, if he resists, take him out. If he runs, shoot him. And if he accidentally falls out an airlock, that's life. <sighs> Havelock is one of us. This is still our station. Let's make sure that people don't think otherwise. Mm. Figured you'd be out hunting down the guy who jacked up your partner. Yeah, yeah, we're just finishing up a few things. Uh... Have you seen the footage of Havelock and Kathari? <sighs> Planning on doing anything about it? Yeah, I was planning on hunting the guy down and killing him real slow. Oh. Right after you find your little rich girl, shake down her daddy for a big payday. Yeah, that's it. You got me. All right, well, Miller, I'll, I'll leave you to it. I'm thinking, hmm, maybe something's being transported on this ship. I'm thinking, Julie's ship was sent out to intercept it. Ships start blowing up the Canterbury, the Donager. It's got to be connected. Does Shadid know about any of this? What do you think is on this Anubis? Something. Something worth spilling a lot of blood over. Maybe this is above your pay grade. Right, like that there. Nothing I can do it, huh? I don't think I can crack the case. We will not listen yes. to threats. We do not negotiate with terrorists. Is that clear? Yes, I understand. Think about your children. You in command out. Anderson Station out. They're calling us terrorists. Oh, of course they are. Job. Mm -hmm. That's right. right now. I'll take charge if you're losing your nerve. You can't tell us to stop. You don't speak for all of us. If we surrender now, it's as good as killing our own children. Okay. I'm assuming that this crew has probably something to do with something. This has to be like this. We were a really good character, Lopez. R.I.P. Is that blowing up like a bacon shake bag? Y'all remember the bacon shake chicken? Hungry. Show me drive diagnostics and core levels. Life support. Why not go to Tycho if we got nowhere else to go? It's a long story. Mm. Shady. And figure out why. It's not the place, it's the man. Fred Johnson? You know him? I've known guys like him. Guys with causes. Causes that get people killed. So you are OPA. So sad that somebody's dead and they're just so happy about quality. Mm. 
Tell Fred Johnson to clear us of birth. We're good to go. Uh, this? Slow down. This team always definitely hmm. Even if I ate, I'm like... Well, you better look at the people. Stop. Identify that man. Whatever gets you through the day, but right now. So keeping the peace. I love this guy. Street trash and radical factions are not OPA, despite what their skin tells you. And I assure you, the piece of trash who tried to crucify him is not one of our ranks. Because as we speak, he's in an OPA safe house. He believes he's under my protection. You don't see what I see. What do you see? A series for Beltas. Earthers get to walk outside into the light. Breathe pure air. Look up at a blue sky and see something that gives them hope. And what do they do? Just they look past that light, past that blue sky. They see the stars and they think, my. What's your point? have a home. It's time Belters had one too. Call it, and you'll get Fila Kothari's location. He's yours. Exchange of information. Julima was one of ours. I want to find out what happened to her. Justice Miller. Make it pretty. Lord, this Let's story this again, is also. getting deep. <laughs> so Julie was an OPA. I don't know if we're supposed to know that beforehand, but I'm excited. Surrendering to the Marines. You in command, this is Anderson Station. We're issuing our unconditional surrender. I'm assuming this backstory is the reason why. Emergency in the belt at series stations impoverished Medina district. Holy shit. Protests demanding justice for lost ship Canterbury and her crew gave way to violent mobs who targeted Martian. Looks like we're not the only ones who remember the can. Retaliation for what Oh, I just tucked into a feed from Ganymede and, uh, hey, when you sent that message to Fred Johnson, you didn't give him, uh, names or anything, did you? Well, partner, it's gonna be kind of hard for you to stay anonymous now. That was news? Let me know if you want your face to look a little different. Oh, my God. Why are they doing this to me? And you, but you've seen it before me. <laughs> Wait. Julie Mao, you know her. OPA throws me work from time to time. Happy to wear their tat, take their money. Happy to take Julie Mao's money too, huh? Only time I did see you cry was, uh, these belters at a rally. They told her. You're one of us now. Scapuli. And that ship was started that whole mess out there. Julie was on it. Jesus, Jesus Christ. You were trying to stop her from getting involved in something ugly. I want to know what it was. She was hanging around some hardcore OPA. Like? Hmm. Anderson Dawes. What for? That's the guy. I don't know. A few weeks before she shipped out, she asked me to hook her up with the data broker. That guy. This guy. Click, can click. <laughs> Tech Noir, level 14. Ask the clerk for a Sherpa. 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 Yeah. She looks like that Mexican artist. 
I'll put that in the video as well. We surrender to your copy. Ima Loda not listening. What what do we do? What do we do? Nothing. Just sit sit there, please. Your door is door. There's an auxiliary type beam transmitter mounted on Toro 5. I think it's just outside of their jamming range. I should be able to relay the station's camera footage and broadcast out. My name is Marama Brown. Four days ago, the miners working for the Anderson Hyosung Corporation took control of the station in an effort to protest the treatment of our children. She and the other children have been diagnosed with what the medics are calling hypoxic brain injury. It's due to the low oxygen working environments. She got it when she came to live here with me. We didn't intend for anyone to be hurt during our protests. And for that, we... And for that, I am sorry. For the sake of our children. <laughs> this show always has me looking like this. If they killed all those kids, and can it be because Julie worked with Anderson? But stuff is floating right now. This is just not looking good for anybody. Who is that? to remain anonymous i can only hope you have no hostile intent regardless you will need to change your transponder code in order to avoid detection transponders are designed not to be tampered with civilian models fuse themselves into lumps of molten graphene if they get messed with we could be a supernova a few seconds from now we need to give the ship a new name to complete the override scream and fire hawk yeah let's <laughs> advertise that we're a gunship Flying Alamo. Who? It's Spanish for workhorse. I didn't even hear I like what you it. said. I know a lady named Rosinante. She was oh. good to me. Whatever. How about Binga? Take that. He's so proud of himself. Inos of the Inos 9 in tank. Looking for a Sherpa. Sherpa. The little guy comes in, says he wants a Sherpa. Come back here, tell this dude he's got a customer, is that right? Yeah, you can work back here. That's all I know. Okay, go. Is that a mouse? Is that the mouse that was running on the thing, at Julie's thing? Okay, episode. Um, I liked, you know what it is? We came from episode four. 
where episode four was so much at one time. And then this episode was, it was, I think it was more maybe story, which was fun. I didn't, I wasn't hating. I'm not hating on it. It was good. I didn't mind it. I want to know, there's a lot that I want to know. I think Julie is actually like, I think she's a villain. I don't know if I'm, I'm if I'm right, if this is true, but that's what I'm gonna go with. I think Julie's a villain. But they also mentioned Anderson, and Anderson was just floating around in space with his child, clearly dead. So how did she meet up with him beforehand, and it was 11 years ago? I don't know, there's a lot of things that aren't making any sense to me, but I know my Expanse crew is going to shout out all the information in this video so please do not forget to like share and subscribe and comment down below and i'll see you guys next time on andres el rey